All right, calculus students, let's learn about the derivative and its relationship to the inverse, uh, which is a fascinating study in, uh, in the way the slope works with the inverse. So let's look at a graph of just the square root of x, just as an example. So I'll graph 0, 0, 1, 1, and then 4, 2, and then 9, 3. See, so I've got a graph big enough for those points. And then I'll just plot these like this. And I've got my graph, my y equals root x. See, that's y equals square root of x right there. And then I'll just take all of these points that I have here, which I'm going to label here. I've got 0, 0. Then I've got 1, comma 1. Then this is 4, comma 2. And over here is... 9 comma 3 and of course to graph its inverse I'm just going to graph um, all of the reversal points that means hey, instead of graphing 4 2 I'll graph 2 4 of course when you turn 0 0 around switch the x and y you get 0 0 and then here's 1 1 and now when I turn this one around I get 4 2 uh, would become 2 4 so here's 2 4 and then of course 9 3 would become 3 9 3, 9. And then we can just graph this. And since we switched the x and y, of course we know that this is x is equal to the square root of y. Hey, I switched the x and y to get those. And this is the ordered pair 0, 0 still right there. If I just take these color, these points in red, this one's 2, 4. And this one is uh, 3, 9. So there's my points. All right, so what we're going to do here with these is we're going to take a look at um, the relationship we get with the slopes. So um, we've got two different functions here, and the first function is this, this f is equal to root x. And the second one um, actually, let's, let's, let's color code them the same way. So I'm just going to go back and take the time to just color code these the same way. So in blue, we got this um, f of x equals square root of x, which I'll call x to the 1 half. And if I take the derivative, I'll get 1 half x to the negative 1 half, negative 1 half, which of course is f prime equals 1 over 2 square root of x. So we can calculate the slopes at our points that we have. Uh, let's go in reverse order. I can have f prime of nine. And so when I plug in nine, I can see that I get two times three down here and that'll be one sixth. I'm gonna get f prime of four. So if I plug in four right there, you see I've got two, two, two times two on the bottom, I get one fourth. And then I've got one more to go here, f prime of one. When I plug in one right there, I get one half. And then one more, if I, try, if I try f prime of 0, I'll have 0 on the bottom, so this one's undefined. It's undefined. Okay, so now we'll do the same thing for this other one. Of course, this other function, what I have is x is equal to root y. I'm going to square both sides and make this y equals x squared, because it'll be easier to take the derivative. That's what I get when I just... Uh, square both sides of this one. So my y prime this time is very clever, 2x. And now I'm going to find the derivative at these same points. Of course, the x values are 0, 1, 2, and 3. So they're different right here, you can see. And I'll do them in the same order. Let's see, I did f prime of 9. The one that goes with that is f prime of 3. And 2 times 3 gives you 6. And here we have f prime of, let's see, the one that goes with this one is this one, so that'd be 2. And when I plug in 2, I get 2 times 2 is 4. And when I plug in this one, f prime of 1, and you can see where this is going. I mean, look at the relationship between these slopes right here. And we can definitely draw a conclusion. And even on this one, if I plug in 0, I get 0. Hey, the reciprocal of 0, you know, that'd be like 0 over 1, would be 1 over 0, and that would be undefined. So you can see that these are actually reciprocals. Um, I could label my slopes on here just to show you, hey, 
this right here, this slope right here is the one that came out one sixth. And the one over here, this one is the slope that came out six. Here's the slope, here's the one that came out one fourth. Here's the slope that came out four, right, and so on. Um, you can see that they kind of correspond together. Now, this draws a distinct relationship. A lot of people would say, oh, I just see, like, the relationship is that these are reciprocals. Um, but that's not enough. You need to say these are reciprocals at a certain point. And that point is when, at these specific points, when these ordered pairs are turned around. This relationship is best just put down in a nice chart, which we'll do right here. So I've got some sort of, some sort of F, and then I've got its inverse, and then I've got the point and its slope. So this is the relationship we're hoping to identify from what we just saw. And here is the point that I'll say, some point that is on our function F. So what point would be on our inverse? If you're thinking, oh, that'd be the B comma A would have to be on it, you're absolutely correct. And if at this point the slope was M, then the slope at the inverse point would be one over M. So it isn't just that they're inverse slopes, that they're reciprocal slopes. It's they're reciprocal slopes at the point where these are turned around, right? Where this is X comma Y and this is Y comma X. And you can answer all sorts of questions, and you'll see it is best if you just recreate this chart. There's actually about three ways to get this answer, but recreating this chart with the specific information that you're given is the easiest possible way to do it. So let's take a look at a couple of examples. So here's the first example. It says, find the inverse's derivative, that's the inverse's slope at A, and notice that A is two. So this is a fancy way of saying, hey, find the inverse's derivative at two. So this is what we're looking for. And so without further ado, we should make this chart that you saw previously. And it'll always be the same. I'll abbreviate this time. This is point. This is my slope. This is my original graph. And then this is my inverse. So this is the way we'll arrange it. The only real piece of information we have is we have the name of the function right here equation for the function and that we have that we would like we would like to find the inverse's slope when x is 2. Now notice that that's the x value of the inverse and that's a clue. We're like aha this one is 2 comma somebody because that's the x value on the inverse. Big clue. And then right over here um, we'll say oh if this is 2 comma somebody then this one must be somebody comma 2. All right, so now what are we gonna do? Well, we've got this point and we know the y value is two. Oh, we got this equation right here. So we can just take and set our equation, uh, x cubed plus two x minus one and set it equal to two. I think I'll get everything on one side and we'll get x cubed plus two x minus three um, is equal to zero. And at this point, if you don't have a calculator and this doesn't factor, which it doesn't, you may want to do, do, do this by what they call just inspection. In other words, you try common points and see if it works. Like I'll try zero. Zero cubed plus zero minus three. Ah, it doesn't equal zero. What about one? One cubed plus two. That'd be one plus two minus three equals zero. Hey, X equals one. I got that by inspection. You may be able to factor it or just do some normal solving techniques, but you may get an equation where um, you don't have a calculator, you don't have a way of solving it, so you can just do it by kind of checking common points. So if this one is now one comma two, then this one is two comma one. We're making some headway. Let's find the slope here. How do we find the slope? Well, we have this equation. We could find its derivative. So let's do that. Let's take and find its derivative at this point. I think I can do that quite easily. Let's see, I've got f prime is equal to, the derivative of this is 3x squared. 
and the derivative of this is two, so it's gonna be plus two, and I've got this nice derivative here. And now comes the moment of truth. I wanna plug something in to find the slope. And here's where you really wanna be careful, because should you plug in one or should you plug in two? I've seen a lot of mistakes on this. Remember this is f, not the inverse. You wanna plug in one, that would be this number right here, and that comes out five. Hey, that means this slope is five, and we now have it. The thing we're looking for is this answer right here, one-fifth, right? That's the inverse's slope when x is two, which is what they were looking for. Okay, so that's it nice and slow. We'll do the next one like a little bit faster. Um, here is an example where it's the same kind of question. You're gonna make a chart the exact same way, um, but the information that's given is a little bit different. So notice at what point, oh, they're asking for the point this time. And you can see all the choices or ordered pairs have an instantaneous slope of one fourth. So, and you notice it's the inverse. So you should think to yourself, oh, I'm gonna have to make another one of these, these charts to keep my information all organized. So here's the point and here's the slope. And so last time our answer was here. This time our answer is gonna be one of these points. So here is going to be f, and here's going to be the inverse of f. And so what does it say? It says, at what point does the inverse have an instantaneous slope of 1 fourth? Oh, the inverse has a slope of 1 fourth. That means the 1 fourth must go right here. And now if I flip this one, I know that this slope is 4. Hey, we're doing really great. Um, so what, what can we do next? Well, we have this equation and I have that the slope is four, so we could find the derivative. That's gonna be f prime of x is equal to four x cubed minus 28. And we're gonna set that equal to four, and we'll solve. That's gonna give us four x cubed um, my, uh, is equal to 32. That's x cubed is equal to eight, so x is equal to two. Aha, x is equal to two. Now that's on f, not the inverse. So this one is two comma somebody, and this one is somebody comma two. Now remember, we wanna know at what point does the inverse have an instantaneous slope. So we want the inverse's point. So we want this one. This is gonna be our answer, somebody comma two. And if we look at our choices, there's only one with a y value of two, and that's this one. Now, if it was a tie, we could then take two and plug it back up in here and see that it came out negative 37, and then this one would be negative 37. We would get that by plugging it in. But truthfully, since it's, there's only one selection that has a y value of two, we can be assured that that is our answer. Hey, that's fun. You can see how the chart just leads you to the answer you understand the relationship between the points and the slope, you can easily get it. There's one other kind of question I want to go on over, and that's what if you're given something with a chart? This is famous for the AP exam. They like this a lot. This are also introducing another letter, this P right here, um, which we'll have to incorporate into our chart. So this makes it um, um, pretty exciting to do. Let's see if we can do it here. Um, so I'm going to make my I'm, I'm going to make my chart. I'm looking for where this inverse right here, which is equal to, they're calling P, um, what the slope is at two. So all the information I want is there, I hope. Let's see if that's true. Now, notice I've got F, I've got F negative one, but they're calling the inverse P. So I'll just put equals P right there, so I'm not confused. So it's a one little addition we'll be making to this. And here's our point, and here's our slope. And so if we look at this, um, it says p prime of two. Well, p is the inverse, so that's the x value here, two comma somebody, and this one is somebody comma two. There it is. And now we'd like to look up and find the slope. Now this time we don't have an equation. The last two we had an equation. We just had this big chart. Uh, what should we do? Well. Um, the chart doesn't have any inverses on it. Like there's no P up here and there's no inverses, it only has X. So we'll be looking at this column and you can see right here that the Y value is two. Now a lot of people will mistakenly look over here, but that's incorrect because the Y value is two on F. 
So I'm looking for a y value that's two. Aha, I have found it. The y value is two. At that point, the x value is one. So I now know my point is one comma two. So this is a one comma two, and that makes this one two comma one. Yeah, I'm making some headway. And now I'd like to find the slope at this point one comma two. Well, here once again is one comma two, and I can see, aha, this is my slope. Now notice, there's no G in the problem, so this is all window dressing, just extra information to see if you accidentally use G. So it's this number right there that I want for my slope, and this is gonna be four, and so I'm like, aha, this is one fourth. And this is the thing they're asking for. They're asking for the P prime, and remember P prime is the inverse, so P prime is this slope right there, and so my answer is one fourth. Hey, now you know how the uh, relationship between inverses and their slopes, inverses and their derivatives work. Give a little homework. Good luck.